Welcome back to the channel guys. Some big news from Google today. So first things first, the Google Pixel 10 lineup is already here and there's some great news. Uh, specifically, if you are like me, an owner of a Google Pixel 9 device. In my case, I do own the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL and it's fantastic news guys, because the Google Pixel 10, uh, specifically 10 Pro XL, is pretty much the same device with a new Tensor G5 chip. I'm gonna share some details. And of course, a lot of new things that are centered around AI. So it's clearly that Google's taking influence while working with Samsung and Samsung releasing the Galaxy AI. So now Google is making the Pixel more about AI. It was always about AI with Tensor. But guys, take a look at this. This is really, really some interesting information as the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL has the exact same physical dimension as the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL, but the 9 Pro XL is 221 grams and the 10 Pro XL is 233 grams, 32 grams. The build quality, the 9 Pro XL has the Gorilla Glass Victus 2. Oh, what a surprise, the 10 Pro XL has the same Gorilla Glass Victus 2. So it's basically the same phone, IP68 versus IP68. So as of now, it's really the same phone. The same display, guys, LTPO OLED 120 hertz, all right, but the 9 Pro XL can go up to 3000 nits peak or max brightness and the 10 Pro XL can give you 200 nits more, like 3300, which is probably gonna be barely noticeable, guys. The same size, 6.8 inches, is basically the same physical shell of a phone with a new chip, the very same resolution, everything is the same. Of course, the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL comes with Android 16 and of course, there are some new things. I'm gonna be talking about them. Guys, the new thing inside the 10 Pro XL and the 10 series is the new Google Tensor G5 chip, which is now built on a four nanometer meter process and it's built by TSMC. And according to Google, it gives you 60% more when you're doing some AI stuff, all right? So it's all about the AI, the very same cameras, guys, on the 10 Pro XL and 9 Pro XL. 50 megapixel camera with an aperture of 1.7, 25 mil for the main one, and then this is the white camera. Then we have a 48 megapixel F 2.8, the very same periscope telephoto guys, 5x optical zoom with OS and the 48 megapixel ultra wide, the very same f of 1.7, the very same sensor size. So it's pretty, pretty much the same phone guys. And yes, the 9 and the 10 Pro XL can do 4K 30 FPS via cloud base upscaling. So it's, yeah, it's not something native. There are some news on the battery front because the 9 Pro XL has a 5060 milliampere and the 10 Pro XL has 500, sorry, 5200. So what is it like? 140 milliampere more and 37 watts watt charging here on the 9 Pro XL versus 45 watts watt. And yeah, it has Qi 2. I mean, yeah, Qi 2 is a new thing, right? And because Qi 2 is a new thing, a lot of the things that actually Google showed was the new Pixel Snap, which is pretty much something like the MagSafe. You just can stick some things around and on the back of the phone, like chargers, some other things. So basically the wireless foundation reinvented, you know, what Apple had with years ago, the MagSafe. So this is a good protocol. You have some strong magnets, you know, they can secure things like wallets, chargers, you know, pop sockets, whatever, like stands. And of course you can put also some charging devices on the back of your phones or even batteries. But basically guys, this is the new phone. I watched some videos around just to get acquainted with this. And yes, they have some new things when using the camera and you go and zoom more than 30X. Now they have pro red zoom. I think they had that before, but now they're using generative AI backed inside the camera's pipeline to somehow enhance your photos. But guys, generative AI means that AI will generate some things that are not there. So it's not pure photography, but don't get me started. A lot of the other vendors are doing this kind of like AI things inside of photos, a lot of processing. They have a new journal app, which like it's 2025. Who the heck is going to use the phone to like block or take some notes? And now Gemini is updated, you know, it can really translate your calls, which we have in Samsung Galaxy with Galaxy AI, and it can also help you and fetch some information if you call, let's say, the airlines and you have some ticket information inside your email, stuff like this that are not unseen, guys. So a lot of people are talking about this software thing, it's basically the same phone. And because, guys, it's the same phone, luckily there are even more news because today, 
actually Google launched the Android 16 QPR2 beta one, okay? And this is really, really good news because I am currently installing it on my Pixel. So, there are new things, guys, okay? Listen, I believe they're important. Expanded dark theme, auto themed up icons. I can't really wait testing this. Interactive choose of sessions, smoother Android migrations, PDF document annotation and editing, display topology API, device aware view configuration. I don't have a clue what most of those are. Granular haptic feedback control. Okay, this I think I know what it is. And also quick settings categories, then media and audio. Okay, this is only for like UI and system experience and accessibility. Some new things and the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1, media and audio, IAMF decoding support, personal audio sharing in output switcher, new audio APIs, HDR, SDR brightness slider, which ain't bad. Also some new things in terms of connectivity, companion device management enhancements and media router network privacy improvements. Some things for privacy and security, two of them, secure lock device and phone tariff protection toggle. And there are some things around developer productivity like widgets, engagement metrics, early warnings for 16 kilobytes page size compatibility. I think I lost a lot of guys here. Enhanced profiling and more robust multi-display testing, which are things already tested here on the channel with the new Pixel 9 Pro XL and the QPR and Android 16. I don't really have Canon right now. I'm only interested in getting finally GUI support and the my Linux machine here so I can test games and you know Debian and etc. But guys, the big news are that the Google Pixel 10 is pretty much the same phone with the new chip and with AI boosted enhancement functionalities. So I'm both happy because I don't really have to upgrade to the new phone and not so happy because apparently Google is just so much aligning to what Samsung are doing. But remember guys, the S23 Ultra had a curved screen, the S24 Ultra had a flat screen and the S25 Ultra changed the form factor, you know, with the edges. So Samsung are doing the same, but they are at least tweaking, you know, like very small little tweaks to the, uh, the physical shell of the phone. Well, Google said, you know what, we're going to give you the very same phone, but with the new chip and with more AI. So what I'm saying is, yeah, Samsung are doing this trick. I think for three years in a row, we almost have like the same camera. Okay, not the same because S23 Ultra had the 10X camera, which we lost and we gained the 5X. But now for two years in a row with S24 and 5 Ultra, we have the very absolute, very same camera setup. Maybe with some minor tweaks to the main ISO cell HP9 sense. No, it's not HP9, Jesus, it's not HP9. Sorry guys, HP9 is the best zoom sense. It's also made by Samsung. Pardon me, it's late. I'm really excited because I get to play with the, the QPR 2 Beta 1. And I'm also even more excited because I don't really have to spend 1,200 US dollars to buy the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL. And yeah, guys, if you wanna say something or share, down below in the comments. And if you have enjoyed this video, I think you know what to do. Stay safe, VST over, and bye.